Hello, welcome to my channel, In Flight Music. My name is Ian, and today I want to go over the difference between using send effects and insert effects and the advantages. Okay, so recently, exactly five days ago actually, I started a 30 day beat challenge, and this was the very first beat that I worked on. But also, a little bit before that, I released my entire template that I use for all my beats. And I actually included that in the description down below if you feel like downloading it. But basically, I had a few questions about the send effects and the parallel effects. Today, I want to go over the send effects. Let's take a listen to some of the drums, because you might be able to hear it better with, uh, say, for example, the snare drum. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn the send effect off. I'm going to so solo the snare and let's take a listen. So I did something really interesting here. I have an EQ and a reverb because the snare overall was too dry, but I still wanted some of this extra width from this other reverb that I have out here. So that's another trick that you could do, adding a space around the original sound and then still adding a little extra width and ambience with another additional send. So let's turn that on and now take a listen. Versus. Now that's a really good example because you could really hear what this wave shaper is doing to this reverb. It's really bringing out a bunch of extra frequencies and extra harmonics. Without this send effect, that snare by itself is sounding pretty thin. But uh, a lot of times I'll use a delay, maybe a couple delays as well. And then all those get sent over to this effects bus. And then in the effects bus, I have this EQ. So you can see that we're taking out all the low end, a lot of the high end, and then we're shaping it just to have some good frequencies around, right around 800. Like I said, this is usually something that I would do um, if I have multiple effects going into this bus, and then I just control the overall ambience or the wet signal of the track overall. So let's take a listen with it off. You can kind of hear that there's a little too much in the high end for sure. Not a whole lot going on in the low end because in the reverb here, I actually have it shaped to where there's not a lot of, uh, yeah, it's already cutting uh, 425 hertz. And then I had this bass turned down with the crossover at 770 hertz. So yeah, I mean, that's probably why I added that little boost right around 800. So let's listen with it on. Just a lot cleaner. Now you can imagine shaping your overall ambience of the entire track with all of your sends. It's, it's really awesome using these buses like that to really create whatever room or atmosphere that you're really going for. So really just overall, I recommend using send effects just from the get-go. One, it's a lot quicker. Two, you're gonna end up with a cleaner mix. Three, you're just gonna have a lot more control over those overall sounds just by having this bus, having this fader that you can move up and down, being able to add an EQ on the overall wet signal, on the overall ambience of the track. Just those three advantages right there should be enough for you to just start at least experimenting using send effects versus insert effects. And like I said, you can see on this snare track that I do still use insert effects when, when I need them because the snare just overall was way too dry. So I needed to put it in a room first and then I needed to add the ambience of the overall track just to glue it together. That's another thing that send effects do. It actually adds overall glue. It makes it, it makes everything sounds like it's all inside of one track. If you like this video, Definitely give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.